Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the plugins of Grasshopper called Parakeet. So I'm going to open a new file in Rhino. Uh, I want to go with no template. Then I would like to set the units on meters through decimal places. In the website foodforrhino.com, uh, I want to go to Grasshopper apps. What I'm interested today is the filter here, category of panels, paneling and rationalization. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, I want to go with Parakeet and uh, it gives us very interesting patterns. I want to download it. Uh, of course, you need to log in when the download is done. It's going to be a zipped file. Then you need to unzip it. And here uh, you can follow the readme file. Uh, this parakeet grasshopper assembly, feel free to right click, go to properties and just uh, to make sure I want to unblock it. OK. Uh, you can either copy the content of this folder on your C drive or uh, simply if you go to Grasshopper and drag and drop parakeet is going to work. For me, it's going to say that you have already done this, so I'm going to skip it. But as soon as you do that, it's going to show the parakeet menu up here. See, I have other stuff too, uh, which are mainly used for paneling. Today, I would like to go with one of these options. I'm interested in this one, snob try hexagonal. That's what I'm interested in. You see, as soon as I click, it's going to create it on a surface on ground. Uh, so in order to make this a vertical uh, plane, so it's suitable for facade design. Here where it says plane, I want to go with YZ plane. So the YZ plane allows us to have it right here. And then I'm going to change the size as well as extending X and Y direction. Uh, in order to do that, let's assume we already have a surface. Uh, I change this to my left view because I want this to be my west elevation. I'm going to go with a plane here and I'm assuming uh, we have like a 12 by 4 facade wall. So I'm going to go with 12 by 4 going back here and uh, this is a surface. In order to see it as a surface, feel free to change this to shade it. Okay, then I want to adjust the size of my pattern to fit there. Uh, by default, the extent of X is on 2, Y is on 5. Let's say if I assign a bigger value to Y, it's actually going in that direction. So I want to reduce the value here. And I want to increase my extent in the X direction. Okay, then finally I want to adjust the size. The size is on one. I want it to be smaller actually. I'm going to go with, let's say, 0 0.40, more or less around this range. It's getting better. Uh, how about I check something? I want to check it in my left view so I can reduce the values in the x direction. 7 or 8 should be enough for this purpose. I'm going to double click type 7. 7 should be good. For the size, I want to go slightly less than 4. So I'm going to try 0.38. Actually, I want to even go with one more digit here and change this to 0.385. I'm happy with the size now. It's all look looking good. Uh, okay, so here I have my grid cells. Let's bring one scribble. I want to add a note that this is my grid cells. I want to make a group out of these nodes. Uh, feel free to go back to the perspective view. So far, 
I have my grid cells. I want to hide this plane so I don't see it over there. Uh, next, uh, see what we have inside here. These are all the curves. So I want to read this surface that I created. Okay, so I can split that surface using this grid cell. So I'm going to go to surface, set one surface, and I want to internalize data so the information of that geometry is in my grasshopper file, then I'm going to select the surface, erase it. Okay. Uh, now I want to split this surface, split surface using the curves. I want to hide the preview here. What you see here is actually now all that split surface. If I hide this grid cell here, and now I have a bunch of small surfaces here. Next thing I want to do, I have two things in mind. One, I want to select the pieces of surface which are like these hexagonal parts. So in order to do that, I know those pieces have a larger area. So I want to go with the area of my fragments Fragments, what are they? They are pieces of surface. Now, if I get the area, I want to hide this because I don't need the points, so I want to hide this. So see, we have different areas, okay? If I just sort these areas, just so you see what type of values we are working with, I'm going to go with my sets, list, sort, See, the areas are around this range, so probably this one, which is 0.3851 square meters, is the hexagons. So what I'm planning to do is I want to, for now, let's get rid of this. If I move a little bit up, see, I have a jump here. I want to get the values which are larger than 0.32. 1 or 0.32. That's what I'm planning to do. So I only get the hexagons. Okay, so I'm gonna go with larger than. I want to go with 0.32. So if the values are larger than 0.32 in area, I want them to be separate in that list. So I want to dispatch dispatch the list. So fragments go to list. Dispatch pattern is larger than. So if I go to preview and if I show you what's going on in these nodes, I want to bring one panel. It's a true false node here. Larger than is going there. So I have two lists. Each of those lists are a set of surfaces. Okay. So now I want to bring two surfaces to surface nodes, connect list A to surface here, list B here, if I hide this. Now, see what happened. Uh, this one, if I hide the other one, you see this one is only giving me the hexagons, which have an area larger than 0.32 square meters. Uh, so I have this separate than all the other parts. Okay, uh, now I'm going to uh, make my code a little tidy and organized. So I had the grid cells. I split the surface. Okay, and I separated the hexagons. Okay, so I want to say this part is giving me split surfaces. I'll bring another scribble and I want to say this is giving me split surfaces. I want to group these items. Another thing I'm interested in is the borders of those fragments. Okay, so I know those uh, fragments or surfaces or B-reps. So if I go with B-rep edge, 
I can get the edges of the fragment. See now all the edges are green, which means they're selected here. Okay, let's see what's going on here. If I connect the naked one over there, it's a dashed line. So I would like to flatten it because when it's dashed, it's a list inside the list. I just want to have one list. Next, I want to double click. I want to go with pipe. Those edges, I want to pipe them by a radius of about three centimeters. So if I connect three centimeters to the radius, flattened naked B rep edges to curve, I get some pipes here. Now let's see what's going on in the pipe. Uh, it's a dashed line again, so I want to flatten it because if I keep it not flattened, it's gonna copy objects on top of each other when I import them back to Rhino. So I'm going to flatten it. I have three sets of things, pipes and two sets of surfaces. Okay. I'm going to make three layers here. New layer. One of them is going to be the pipes, the edges. The other two, I want to name them set one and set two. How about I name them panel set one new layer panel set two. Oh, excuse me didn't rename it here panel set two. okay it doesn't matter which one is the active layer pipes let's go with three different colors so I make sure they have been imported correctly okay and I'll go to my Grasshopper file. I'm gonna uh, first save my file. I wanna right click on the pipes, bake them in my pipes layer and be grouped. Yes, okay. Surface, one set of it, I wanna bake it as a group in panel set one. The other set of it, I wanna bake it as a group in panel set two. So I'm happy with my objects. I bake them back into Rhino. This is the whole script if you want to see it in one glance. I'm going to close my Grasshopper file and this is what I have here. Okay, it's all working well. Feel free to assign materials to the panel set one. Let's see which one it is. Panel set one, they are the a hexagon parts. I want to assign a different glass to them. So I want to go with uh, import from library. I want to go with glass. Let's see. The preview doesn't work for me. It's because of some uh, conflicts in graphic card and the software. But I want to go with, let's say, dark brook glass. Okay. Uh, how about I duplicate it? I'll keep the dark blue. I want to duplicate this material and instead of dark blue, this one I want to name the copied one as dark red. I'll keep this on a red color. I want to assign a red color here like this. Okay. And the other one, maybe I will assign the blue glass but a little bit more blue I'll go with this one and to the surroundings feel free to assign some uh, mullions I'm assuming it's a wood based object so I'm gonna go with some dark wood maybe walnut walnut brown and okay now let's see how it works uh, I'm gonna change this to rendered and I want to go with render tools, toggle sun panel, turn the sun on. I want to go with here. So it's going to go to Toronto. You need to be online for it to work. And I want to check the sun. Did I turn it on? Yes. So now you start seeing the shadows. I'm assuming this is my facade. Of course, you can create the floor, roof and everything. So it's going to look more realistic. Under render settings, under file properties, render, 
I want to assign a ground plane just to see ground plane settings, just to see how the material works. Use a material, use a new material. I'm going to go with architectural floor ceramics type 2. OK and OK. I just want to assign something also maybe to the sky. I can go from render menu or right from here again. Uh, maybe I would assign some image, image to the background, sky image. And I might ch change this to planner. Switch the background mode to environment. That's what I need to do. So this is how the render is going to look like. Of course, this is just a test render, but I just wanted to show you how we can go with two different uh, sets of colors. Uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you very much.